I'm Kristen Burt, and today we're in Burbank, California at the Hollywood Hot Rods Open House. We're going to be checking out the cars and talking to some interesting people, so come along for the ride. All right, standing next to me is Zach Norman and his 1932 Ford Roadster. And I'm going to start out with this question right away because I asked you earlier, how long have you had this vehicle and how long did it take you to answer? Uh, it took me a while to answer, but it's 16 years. It almost took him 16 years to answer. About 16 years to answer, that's right. And I said, thank goodness we're not on camera. But uh, tell us a little bit about the history of the vehicle. Uh, I bought this car in Texas, um, like I said, 16 years ago, um, and it's been in several kind of incarnations. I drove it for a long time as a real beater, and then I decided after some uh, particularly interesting uh, events with the car to take it all apart and redo it and rebuild it from the ground up and do something special. And what were those interesting events? Well, about uh, eight years ago, Troy Ladd, who's the guy who is doing all the uh, uh, work on the car here, all the body work on the car and, the, uh, and buttoning it up, is, um, and I were driving back from Vegas, a particularly interesting time in Vegas, and uh, the uh, car decided to lose its drive shafts about 99 miles from Santa Monica and in the middle of the night on the, uh, on the highway. And so uh, that was the impetus. I said, okay, that's enough. It's, too, it's enough being a beater, I'm going to put it together right and, uh, and rebuild it from the ground up. It was time, right? Yeah. Okay, so what phase are we in at this point? Uh, I would say we're uh, uh, in the ninth inning here. Um, it's almost done. The, the motor runs. It's a Cadillac 331 uh, with um, 365 heads, uh, blue printed motor. Um, it's a T5 transmission, and it's, uh, it's designed to move out. Um, it's got an Edmunds two-place intake with uh, stock CAD carbs. Um, and uh, the interior is all buttoned up. And as you see, it's kind of got an aircraft theme to it. Um, we've got, uh, we're probably, I don't know, about a month or two away from it being completed. Are you excited about that? Yeah, I am. I've got some other projects I've been working on in the meantime. But uh, uh, this one, uh, it's about time for it to be done. And then will you drive this as your main vehicle? Uh, I will drive it a lot, uh, but I can't drive it as my main vehicle. I have too many other vehicles competing for time. Oh, you've got to rotate them all. Yeah, that's right. It's in a heavy rotation. So it might start. It might get off the bench and start for a while, but yeah, it's going to be in heavy, heavy rotation with a 64 Chevy I have. I have a Harley-Davidson bobber that's electric that I just actually set the world speed record at Bonneville on. 
Are you kidding me? Not at all. Not what was the record? Uh, we went a whopping 77. I got to look at the camera for this one. 77 miles an hour. It was an open record. It was an open record. So <laughs> impressive. Yeah. So 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 between that and the the 64 Chevy and some other stuff that I got going on, it'll it'll find its way into rotation. All right. Since it's 90 percent done, what's your favorite thing about the vehicle now? Well. Um, I would have to just say the general style of it. Uh, there's certain aspects. I, when uh, when I kind of sat down to uh, conceive the new design of the vehicle, it was um, I wanted it to be holistic. I wanted nothing to really stick out as being the one element that uh, sets the car off. A lot of times you see cars where it's got some crazy motor and really nothing else is all that special about it, or it's got some amazing interior. Um, I mean, if you look at the ride, and I hope you do, You'll see that it's got you know a lot of attention to detail, and like the, the steering components here are very unique. Um, the interior is all World War II uh, vintage gauges from World War II aircraft. Um, the car doesn't run a speedometer; it runs airspeed. So it's a very unique take on the whole roadster thing. And do you have a fascination with aviation as well? Yeah, I do. My father was a pilot, and I grew up flying airplanes with him, and uh, he owned a, a biplane for many years, and um, so aviation is, was part of my childhood, and I decided to kind of incorporate my passion and kind of just kind of a hobby of knowing about airplanes and learning about them and kind of build a roadster around that notion. Well, that's awesome. Thanks for sharing your roadster with us. It's pretty awesome. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I'm pretty excited about this next interview because you know what? I have Zulu Tattoo, renowned tattoo artist, but also owner of the 51 Chevy. How are you? I'm doing well. All right. You know, we'll, we'll talk about you in just a moment, but let's talk about your car first. Tell us a little bit about it. This is the Zulu machine. It was built here at Hollywood Hot Rods. It's a 1951 Chevrolet Styline Coupe Deluxe. It's been chopped uh, seven inches in the front, four in the back, lowered good suspension, AC, it's my daily driver. Drive it every day, and I love this car. How long have you had it? I've had this car approximately six years. So um, how long did it take to refurbish and get it to look just like this? I drove it around stock for a couple of years, and then I met Troy from Hollywood Hot Rods. We did some designing. So it took about a slow five years of you know, meticulous planning and getting it just the way I wanted. Because I wanted it not so 50s, but a little bit of an art deco sleek kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I wanted a car that I could drive around with the bad boys and blue jeans or put on a tuxedo and go out for the night and it still, you know, be stylish. 
All right, because you've got a little bit of style yourself. I, I would say you're kind of a fashionista. Uh, oh, yeah. That's my opinion, at least. But so what of your own details did you want added to this vehicle? Well, the, some of the main things that I, the thing that I really push for is the chrome. A lot of the uh, stylings you see lately, people strip all the chrome off the car and give it kind of that look. I wanted to add chrome, so I kept all the chrome and I added uh, my little speed girl on the front, which didn't come stock. So I wanted it to be shiny. I wanted it to be a pretty car. And I think that's the first thing that I noticed when I came up to the vehicle. Uh, that's my lady, lady luck. She gets me where I'm going in this thing. Is that your favorite thing about the vehicle? Yeah, it pretty much is. <laughs> I understand. Now, was this your first uh, hot rod vehicle you've ever owned? Well, before this, I had a uh, 1963 Nova, and I've had some vintage trucks, but this was the first lead sled I've owned. And this is your baby, I can tell. This is the Zulu machine. <laughs> With the license plate to match. Oh, yeah, it's mine. <laughs> All right, now I would be remiss if I didn't talk about your work yourself because you do a lot of celeb uh, tattoos and uh, talk a little bit about that. Oh, yeah, we have a good clientele. I tattoo Janet Jackson, Queen Latifah, Mariah Carey, David Duchovny. A lot of the Hollywood stars come to me and like, Hollywood Hot Rods customed my car, I custom bodies. I love it. And who's your favorite celebrity you've worked on? I really got a kick out of working on Mariah Carey. She was pretty cool. And if I were to get a tattoo, what would you do for me? Well, I would just have a consultation, find out what you like. Just like you wanted to know personally about my car, I want to know personally about you, and then we'd go from there. Okay, maybe for my 21st birthday, you can give me a tattoo. Right on. Yeah, not really my 21st. I want to see some ID. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough, Zulu. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure talking with you. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, I am here with John Bowers and the 1930 Ford Swindon, also known as the Green Grenade. Dun dun. All right, start right off. Dun dun dun. I know. Start right off and explain the nickname. Well, the Green Grenade name comes from um, in the military. They have the blue grenades, which are like fake grenades, you know, uh, not live rounds. Mm -hmm. And they call this the Green Grenade because it's deadly. 
so watch out, you know. So they stuck a green grenade on the back uh, rumble seat, so that's where the green grenade is. So when you're behind the wheel, we should like sort of clear off the road? The gun sight is for the little minivans on the road. <laughs> you run over any minivan in sight? Exactly. <laughs> All right, so tell us the history of this vehicle. Well, basically it was built in Salt Lake. Uh, it's a salt flats racer. And uh, it was built there by uh, Chris Elmer. And then it went to uh, Texas for a while. And then my friend uh, picked it up in January of this year. I believe on eBay, of all things. And uh, we've had it ever since. Um, it's basically a seven inch chop on the roof. Mm -hmm. Extended the body two inches so to accentuate the chop. It has a 350 or 331 Hemi. It's an industrial Hemi engine, so I know that much. Uh, it has sedan doors mm -hmm. to make it longer, sedan tubs, and uh, it's an automatic and Stromberg, so that gas you smell is the Strombergs. I can smell it. It is pretty strong. Yeah. That's good. That's that good. is good. All right. Well, I have to say you have the best of both worlds because your friend is letting you borrow this vehicle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even show him where the keys are. I, I, I hide them for me. Do you get to keep it in your garage? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I babysit it, basically. I so, think he drove it twice. And so the deal is your friend buys it, but you get to yeah. play with it. Yeah, market it and get the price to go up, and then he cashes in on the on the profits, right? How can I get a deal like that? Uh, we'll talk. <laughs> John, you're a character. What's your favorite story so far about your vehicle? Um, just people asking, am I going to paint it? And I tell them that the car goes so fast that I did paint it, and the pe paint just peels right off, you know? But they, they don't get the no paint thing. <laughs> you have a story for everything, don't you? Yeah. We wash it with a, a scotch Bright and WD-40. That's all it takes. Yeah, it really does. So the plans are to maybe just keep this a while as an investment and yeah. perhaps sell it? or Yeah, just keep it. I mean, it gets a lot of uh, notoriety, so why get rid of it? You know, it's a very unique car. It has a lot of unique features. Everything's all shaved off the front unit. It's all hidden. The alternator's kind of tucked underneath. So it's a unique car to keep. So uh, what car are you going to con your friend into buying for you next? Uh, maybe a little trailer for this car. Like a little teardrop trailer or something, uh -huh. right? That and then you put your little puppies in it? Yep. Yep. All right, John, you're a character. Oh, thank you. Just like the Green Grenade. Thank you very much. with me is Scott Lunsford and his 1929 Ford Model A sedan. And I got that right, correct? That is correct. All right, tell me a little bit about your vehicle. Sure, this car is a labor of love. It's also a family member. This was my father's car. Um, and he left it to me, uh, I'm honored to say, before he passed away. And um, had some really good people um, who actually 
brought it to Los Angeles to me. They're a couple of brothers, good friends of mine, um, drove up to uh, the Modesto area where it was in storage and, and truly one, you know, one brother flirted with uh, the lady at the office while the other brother went with some bolt cutters and, and actually cut the lock, put it on a trailer and brought it down about a week uh, before my father passed away. So we got to see it one last time. Which is a great story, but it also makes me think that this car is on the lam and <laughs> a little sketchy history with the vehicle. Oh, but that's uh, that's a Lunsford tradition right there too. And uh, but actually, I do have the the papers. This is truly legally my car. It just had a little uh, dodgy beginning, you know. Yeah, I'm learning a lot about you, Scott. Here, okay. <laughs> All right. Well, tell us what your dad did to the vehicle. Sure. Um, my dad was a street rod guy, bless his heart. I think these older uh, older gentlemen here, they uh, they worked hard all their lives, so they wanted cars with air conditioning and power windows and all that good stuff. Uh, I do love traditional hot rods, like um, more like the cars you're seeing around here. There's some fantastic traditional cars around here. Um, but I left some parts of my, my old man in it. The, the engine was my father's, the rear suspension was my dad's. Uh, and then I worked with some really great hot rod builders, a guy named Logan Davis and some others who, um, who essentially, they schooled me a lot on some traditional hot rod stuff, so we selected some authentic parts. I did a lot of uh, sanding and uh, you know de-rusting and all that good stuff, and we assembled what I think is a pretty good uh, early 60s style uh, sedan here. So, um, so that's the way it sits right now. So what are your touches to the vehicle? I think, uh, I think it was mostly, first of all, selecting this color. It's an early Ford paint, but uh, I wanted to do something kind of unique. Um, and, and I was sort of drawn to this color. And uh, I think just selecting the parts, what, what it was was sitting down with a lot of old magazines and looking at a lot of the old cars and making sure you got stuff, uh, you know, trying to get the car to sit just right so selecting the the front suspension making sure i had you know the original ford emblem that kind of good stuff um keeping the uh, full fendered sedan a lot of times uh you know first thing hot riders do is pull, pull the fenders off but the sedan i think happens to look better full fendered yeah so so you did a little bit of self-education along the way sure and you know I've, I've busted my knuckles on the car as well you know but i i can say that without some really good hot rod builders who helped me along the way we wouldn't be where we are today so that's awesome now i have to tell you my favorite part of the vehicle the sunroof i know you know we're in here in you know, it tried to rain this morning, but see, it still turned out to be a beautiful day, so I don't think there's any harm. It'll probably never see a roof or any glass on the sides. It's, it's probably going to always be this way as long as I live here. So, but my favorite part of the car, there's an, there's an old plaque some buddies of mine made from my, uh, from my dad's wake. It's got some chips from where uh, we bought the bar around to drinks, and uh, so the old man's uh, riding with me every day. And that's a great tribute to your dad. So thanks for sharing the stories about your vehicle with us. Oh, it was my pleasure. Thank you very much. Thanks, Scott. That's it from the Hollywood Hot Rods Open House in Burbank, California. I'm Kristen Burt. We'll see you next time. Cake batter cake with batter. bananas, bananas, not bananas, 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 bananas and Heath Bar Crunch.